for joining us on the Friday Film Podcast. Today we have the multi-talented Will Culverwell with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is our Friday Film Podcast. This is a, a project by the Film Fellowship, which is an initiative between Magamba TV, or Magamba Network as a whole, and ALZ, the Accountability Lab Zimbabwe, to just sort of give you know young independent filmmakers the tools that they need not only to engage in storytelling but to engage in responsible storytelling so thank you so much for being here i'm excited so right so to start off with i know this is a question that like everybody especially in zim not even just in the film industry everybody in zim <laughs> what do you how many jobs do you do how many different skill sets and job titles do you have well like when especially in Zim here, you can't really specialize. Yeah. Uh, you just sort of like thrown in where you're needed. So I've done pretty much everything on, mm -hmm. on a film set here in Zim. I've been just a runner. I've been a driver uh, all the way up to cinematographer to director. So, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Is there a particular area, I guess, field that you particularly enjoy? Yeah, I, from... I specialize as much as I can in cinematography. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that that's where my passion is, the lighting and the real technical aspect, you know, just getting in, in there with the camera. That's that's my thing. That's your thing, yeah. So in that, um, so you've been directing and then you've been on strictly with the cinematography. What is, for you, what has been the biggest difference between the two? Because you're both still the main people behind the camera, but you have to have a different eye, right? Yeah, you do. And like the... The, the cinematographer and the director they work very closely together and you mm -hmm. have to have a really good relationship and you've got to understand um if you're the director you really have to understand what your vision is so you can uh express it the, the most succinct way to the cinematographer mm -hmm. and then they can understand the best way to make that vision come to life yeah yeah so yeah it goes hand in hand you've got to work really closely together so they are different but uh, how can you say they're sort of like brother and sister roles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like each one knows a little bit about the other. So yeah. I've seen I've seen a few productions where one of them was clearly missing. <laughs> you can't like what you're saying is there's such a slight difference between the two, but you can clearly tell when one is not what, there. Yeah. Either the camera was just set up on a tripod, or either the director knew i don't know it's just yeah like yeah. i can i could give you a, a anecdote uh when i was working in cape town i worked on this nollywood film um and nollywood productions are very they're very they're very interesting <laughs> <laughs> to say the least yeah uh because they, they, they don't particularly have like a structure it's uh -huh. just sort of okay we're gonna go and shoot here and you don't know anything at, at hand. It's all the director. And he's like, okay, fine. I just want two cameras here. And we're going to film the scene. Oh, so and like as you go. As you go, just, you just, you're okay. just shooting the scene. And he's just like wide, medium, close up. And then he's happy with that. And then at, at one point, he was like, okay, I'm going to go pick up some stuff. And then he disappeared for, <laughs> for like two or three hours. And so we just had, we were, we were just sitting there. We were just like, okay, let's just shoot what we have. Let's just shoot. Let's just shoot so we can go home because oh, it's wow. like it's two o'clock in the morning. And then he oh, comes, God. he comes back and he's got a fresh haircut and, and a takeaway box. And you know what would have, I think like for me, the final straw would have been the fact that it was one takeaway box. Just the <laughs> one, like, like he could have You could have brought us all something, you know, you know? but yeah. yeah. So yeah, like there we were just like, okay, this person has to say this to this yeah. person. We don't know what the, the context of the scene is but yeah. we just have to like shoot it if we don't we're gonna be uh all day i have so, several questions like what were you still shooting though at 2 a.m it was a weird like scene in a in a hotel because that's all the scenes were they were in hotel rooms okay uh, so it didn't matter it was just these two people just... talking and yeah it was really it was really a really experience interesting experience and like everybody was down to just get it done well, yeah like actually. it was just sort of like okay i'm getting like 500 rand for the day let me just just get this over and done with because i don't oh, get this sure. finished i'm not gonna get paid but yeah oh that's rough <laughs> oof, oof, oof. so you were what was what was your specific role i was i was the cameraman on that okay yeah we had like three different cameramen there was no like dop it was just sort of 
just throw up a light in the room to just make it like who was throwing up the lights <laughs> anybody said, yeah anybody who just put the 2k in the corner <laughs> blast it into the ceiling so there's, there's just like some sort of lighting in there and then yeah. we just shoot yeah it was a really odd experience yeah and you can tell i don't know if you've um worked with directors because it seems like some people just don't think of the lighting as part of the vehicle for telling the story at all mm -hmm. at, i don't know in yes. your, in your yeah. experience <laughs> yeah it's like they just sort of yeah a lot of people don't really understand the 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 how much lighting pl plays in in uh showing emotion and tone mm -hmm. uh of a film you can see like different that's why you, you watch films and they got like different like color palettes and like you know the, the matrix got this greenish tinge to it and you know you got like um can think of like a, a Quentin Tarantino movie yeah. or a, a Michael Bay movie. It's just like super orange. Yeah. And, and and that all plays into the emotion, the tone and the feel of the film. And I guess when people don't have an, uh, a lot of experience, uh, they just think, okay, I just need it to be light. I don't want to see any shadow. They think, exactly. they, they think shadow is bad. Um, yeah. And then also shooting someone up against a white wall, which... It's which, all white walls. Yes, it's constantly which, which is terrible. But I'm like, I'm like, okay, so if this is your house, you guys don't have like artwork. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and in real life, do you ever see two people having a conversation sitting on a on a couch? No, but my favorite, my actual favorite, um, is it's it can be a white wall, but there'll be like a TV in the background <laughs> playing a completely unlicensed <laughs> like. I watched like half I will never forget I always bring this up I watched like half of X-Men in one film I was like I don't what was this movie this movie is just showing in the background you know, I don't know if X-Men knows that this is what's good I don't... so yeah you, you get like it's it's it, it definitely it's, it's a learning it's a learning experience mm -hmm. and yeah uh, I just feel like people should dive a little bit deeper especially if you're going to be a, a director a director should have a, a, a good understanding of all the departments mm -hmm. is because they for the director you're using them to to bring your your vision to life and yeah. if you don't understand how they do their job you can't do your job properly yeah so on on that i don't know i feel hmm, i've noticed that some of the times with you know in our young industry the issue is the director is the script writer. So they're only directing because they, they want the to be responsible for bringing their vision, mm -hmm. their script to the screen, but they're not actually a... Do, have you had that experience? Oh, yes, well, all where... the time. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Um, and a, a script writer is not a, cannot, is not a director. You're not mm. all the time is a director. And then the thing is, a lot of people also just comes to the base. Is, is people don't know how to write scripts. They just think, they just think, oh, I got cell text. I can just like type it out and make it look like a script. It's not really a script. Yeah. And then you've got to understand how to break down that script. Mm. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so there's, 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 there's a lot than just writing the script. Yes. And I guess there's, there's no resources or like you can't really. Um, how can I go about this? You can't really like. Uh it's hard to like train someone to mm -hmm. uh, to be a script writer if they don't have like how can i say uh, uh some sort of like a mentor or something that actually knows exactly how yeah. how how it all works together but yeah and even still even if you're just sort of working together with people at the same level you just laterally there's just a lot of like not wanting to take advice or not wanting to like have reviews and criticism because you can definitely tell some things just there was no review at any stage in the process mm -hmm. from like the conception of the concept to the writing to the actual production the whole thing there's just no review yeah. in between i had some guy who gave me a script and then i read it i read i think i read like five pages and i was like okay dude straight away <laughs> straight away and did this guy not start cussing me out Mm -hmm. and i'm like mm -hmm. okay well if, so go, go go give it to someone if it's so good go give it to someone else and they can make it and you can you can get famous but it's not gonna happen but that's the thing is they, they just make it on their own and they're like well this was so great like, that's why i never do script writing Ooh, no, yeah. no. it's 
it's it's, it's a big can of worms and yeah you need a, a very you need a specific talent for that for sure for sure for sure for sure so yeah it was in that um so you need you need your lighting you need your good cinematographers you need people on the camera as well and just that role of the director encompassing all of these things but so what have you guys in your experience what have you done when there was just yeah just not enough like do you ever feel a responsibility to try and do something about it like lightly mention it or is it one of those you know this person's scary they're gonna find me if i say something so just leave it well, no, I always like uh, um, you got to you got to be respectful. Yeah. But like I always, I always speak my mind, you know, mm -hmm. and and like always try, is uh, always try and get like an opinion from someone else because they might see yeah. something slightly different to you, and it can make the world of difference. Mm -hmm. So if you're really stuck in your in your opinion and your point of view, you you won't grow. You won't learn anything new. Yeah. 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 No, because it's. Some rough things out there. <laughs> Some rough working conditions. Um, so you you have worked um on on like have you ever done lighting like the design aspect of it in pre production or you mostly just one went once yeah, you're on set. Yeah, you know, I've done like yeah. You have like a whole a whole depending on the on the production. Uh, -huh. uh yeah, you will you will have like pre production meetings and then you. Uh, figure out your, your your tone and your style and you'll mm -hmm. have your mood boards and everything and then you'll look at examples from other sort of similar productions or completely different productions but you want that sort of look yeah and you try and like um what's the word uh, uh, uh you try and re re-engineer it and like try and figure out Is what that, they yeah. did to try and like achieve this look if you can't find any sort of technical specs on how they shot it uh so yeah you go into those sort of details but those those are very far and few uh, projects where they've actually got the time to put in pre-production like that yeah because i was gonna say what do you do working this side of the world where just a whole bunch of that tech you just straight up don't have it or the production can't yeah, afford you, it there you sort of just gotta like you gotta know there that's when you have to know your your, your craft really well mm -hmm. and when you you're working on the fly and you got to understand, okay, if I put this light, I'm going to get this sort of a shadow. And you know what? I need this sort of intensity. We need some diffusion over there. And that mm -hmm. just comes with experience. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and like you're saying, that, like just the ingenuity of multiple people working on it, not mm -hmm. thinking, well, I'm the lighting designer. Yeah. You know, somebody can have a great idea to get a certain, um, like a certain tone to your scene or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you have to have in that pre-production everything. What has been your experience now on the set and with the lighting and everything? And I don't know, have you been in places where people were touching stuff too much? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've, I've been on that. Yes, I've had, like, been on shoots where people start coming, they start touching the camera. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's cool and everything. But, you know, you, you're going to break something. And then I'm responsible for it being broken. Or, you know, I've seen people drop like $100,000 cameras. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, what, and happened? What, what has happened in that situation? Like, who? It just goes, it goes, the whole set just goes completely quiet. For sure. <laughs> it just goes completely quiet because people are known like, oh my gosh, if this, if the lens is broken, now you got to go take it back to the people you got it from and explain, Jesus. oh, this, 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 this drunk person on set like tripped over the tripod and yeah. No, the fear, the absolute fear is put in me because, like, I'm really socialized to, you know, always help, give a helping hand until somebody said, the problem is where if that thing should break in your responsibility and you had no right or qualification to, be... to have been touching that thing, you personally are screwed. Yeah. Not just the production, but yeah. you personally as well. Yeah, that's why, like, there's, like, certain, like, etiquettes on set. Mm -hmm. Um where if it's your department you, you don't if it's not your department you, you stay away it. from it yeah it's it, not it, rude to not yes. help you just you just even if there's a fire going on in the camera truck <laughs> it. it's not your department so yeah and oh. and yeah that's that's just because we don't have such we don't have such a developed film industry mm -hmm. those sort of those sort of uh, uh things haven't really been 
taught to people a lot of a lot of people that i've worked with on set this is probably their first or second production and yeah. they don't really know exactly how things operate the hierarchy and whatnot mm -hmm. so yeah they can cause like issues but the, the sets are small enough where you can work around it you can work yeah and then there's also issues like you're saying some people not just in the in the cast like the rest of the queue but the actual you know tech people themselves sometimes there's definitely been issues of um oh you on set to act up can you just plug that in for me <laughs> it's one of those um <laughs> you know when when you don't have a plug oh and it's just so the, you just wires, have the, wi the wires <laughs> you're just trying to so jam it into know, the wall you know they know like what you do this with the ever sharp and then you put and i was just like and if we die in an electrical <laughs> fire, like, and then if we die, yeah, <gasps> no, there's a lot of, um, but yeah, luckily, like you're saying, when you have that experience, and then there's that one person on set who can then tell people, like, just because someone else is closer to to the thing, and you have to jump over a bunch of cables to get there, you can't, you can't tell, tell someone, someone else to, someone to do it because yes. the <laughs> first problem in you having to tell someone else is you did not plan your stuff correctly. Yes. Why do you have six hundred cables crisscrossing <laughs> exactly from yes. you to get to your job? And second of all. Just why did you, as a tech crew, what the director not plan these shots so you wouldn't have to be going back and forth over the set and do things in a flow that mm. makes sense? Yeah, that all just comes down to a uh, good pre-production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is and, not... yeah, and I cannot stress, <laughs> I cannot stress pre-production. Cannot stress it enough. It is the most, one of the most like important things you can possibly do. Yeah. yeah. And just literally everybody who's come on has just said I, exactly that I cannot stress enough. Of course, things are going to go wrong. But, but, you know, at least you're prepared and you can, like, find out something. You can figure out something to do. Yeah. Figure out to get your hair cut before we start shooting. <laughs> That'll be Instead a good one. Where did he get a haircut? There were I, two I, I, Don't even ask me. Don't even ask me, you know. so many questions. It came there with some couscous and, you know... And I'm like, yeah, this is Nigerian oh, guys know what to hustle. Oh, and I'd be fuming. But that's the thing, though, is there's a lot of also, like, like you're saying, some people are like, I'm not getting a lot of money, but I really need this money, so I just have to stay here and get it done. Yeah, yeah, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I've, I've done, like, ooh, some ridiculous jobs just for, like, a couple of bucks. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's the life that you live. It's a lot of taking advantage, isn't it? Because when you finally hear at the end what the budget for the whole thing was, and then you remember your experience on set and being like, we didn't even have toilet paper. Where, where did this money go? <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes you won't get paid, and then be like, "Oh no, we'll we'll, we'll pay you once once it's sold or, or the best." Once it starts making yeah, money, the best is the best is um, uh, oh Netflix is interested, and I'm like, no, don't 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 try, don't try. Uh, that's that's it's not how it's not yeah. how it works, and yeah. We've got a lot of people here in Zoom who, who try and pull pull that move. Yeah. It's like so and so and you know, at least because in in the like proof of concept budget, there should already be paying people at least something. And then the contract should then have uh, a workaround saying, should this get picked up further in yeah, the salary up to XYZ? And, and it's like see the thing is it's like uh, people don't really understand like how the film industry, the business model works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it comes to like technical crew and whatnot, you're a contract worker. You're paid to do the job. That's exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. The 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 profit from the the sale of the thing that goes to the producer. That's their money they're putting into mm -hmm. this. So that's the thing is, if you're going to be producing something, you should have your money already to produce it. Not thinking. Yes. Not thinking. Oh, when this is sold, you're not you're not guaranteed yeah. it's going to get sold. It's like okay, I want to invest in this project. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay the people to do the job. And then once it's done, I will see if I can recoup my costs. Yeah. But then the thing is, yeah, and Zim, it's sort of like you, it's like the people come here, it's like, oh, I need you to shoot this for me. And then when it's sold, but then you, you, you're you shooting something with a, an old cannon in the middle of the street and you think any sort of broadcaster is going to think, oh, this is high enough quality yeah, for me, for me gonna... to buy when you spend $300 to shoot the whole thing. But that's the cash money too, right? Like you need to have money to make money. Yeah, yeah. The things that 
on set that you've noticed like this particular person did this particular thing so well and it made such a difference what has that been for you <sighs> that's such a specific question um i guess you've had a lot of uh experience so it's, yeah, for it's me just, it's like I still remember like specific things and I'm like wow this made all the difference I guess you know it's sort of those things you don't notice you don't notice when someone does their job well true true yeah. that's the point yeah. of doing your job well yeah because yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't have any issues with someone and you won't yeah. notice them when they've done their job well because they're doing their job so it's it's like I guess the the, the afterwards and when you look back and you think okay yeah that, that guy he, you know he was really on point he mm. knew exactly what it was, he, was, he was anticipating things, whether it was like a battery change or, you know, you could see he noticed that the light was in shot or something like that. Yeah. It's sort of the small things that that uh, that that really that really add up. It is. It is. the. I mean, the devil's in the details mm-hmm. for each and every single person to constantly be going through that checklist. And like you're saying, just constantly be busy and have good assistance. Yeah. Everybody is. Everybody's mind is on the task. And uh, the I task. would say a good, a good uh, um, indicator of, of a good assistant mm. is someone who asks a lot of questions. Yeah. Who's just be like, okay, what, what are we doing? Why, why is that here? And not just someone that's just like following around. They're, they're actively trying to learn and trying to figure mm-hmm. out why these certain things are done. Yeah. And someone you can then trust that if I haven't got something they're on it yes then they, they'll see it because you know i won't, won't be able to see everything they'll be like oh you should you forgot this you forgot that yeah, yeah. so i did want to ask in your work behind the camera as a cinematographer and if you're doing the lighting design as well um all of that how closely do you then work with the editors and have you seen a lot of specific color correction yeah editors? like with the with the editors, I guess you can you you, you do work with them to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can come down to like shot choice and something like that. You can tell the the editor, you know, what, actually, you got two different shots. They're both good, but mm-hmm. then you're like, I actually prefer this one because of whatever, and yeah, s- certain things like that. And then you will work with the color grader, with with the tone, and to just see that you you're getting the same sort of like you you're getting the feel that you you wanted yeah. with the director you understand okay we want the, the the reds to really pop in this and then you you tell the the color grade okay fine we need it like this yeah so yeah so i guess it just goes with the budget so you mm-hmm. do you do personally yes like yes. to go through that step because you know, some people are like i've handed over something like like, oh. i'm done i'm done i'm done and it's like but yeah. if you have this whole vision like you want to see it through to the mm-hmm. end if you put so much evidence into your lighting design and so you want to make sure that you know in the editing it's it not looks good washed yes. out yeah, yeah. yeah. you know you're not adding weird things like vignettes or something that's going to like totally throw off yeah the, the, the look that you were going for yeah that's 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 really important so i know are there i know we have editors and that's great uh in terms of like cutting and things but have you have you seen a lot of color Color graders. Oh no, not not in Zim. That's specifically spe- specialized in like color grading because yeah. it is a very it's a very niche thing. And you know, like now with uh, 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 with with editing, you know, you can just like throw on a LUT or whatnot, or just like mm-hmm. some sort of uh, pre color grade thing that you bought yeah. off the internet. Um, so you know, with those in depth color grades, it's sort of uh, I would say isolated to like film especially here in zim mm-hmm. but even still i guess like most people don't i don't know haven't really seen that intense color grading yeah because yeah. it seems to be a step that's just completely forgotten and i'm like you know you had a great camera but that was only that's only a part of a it. part of the recipe and you can just tell with the films that had one because i I don't know i feel like it's it's the two things an actual lighting design Mm -hmm. beyond just let's light these people and make sure we have no shadows yeah plus the color grading afterwards and it just makes for such a rich yeah yes and and and, and, you know so it's a sort of a thing that when you look like at a at a hollywood movie and then you look at like something you shot you're like why can't i why don't they look the same you know exactly and for a long time i couldn't put so I couldn't put my like. Yeah. Well, why don't Why don't they look the same? And 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 it goes down to like everything. It's like the quality of light. 
uh, you know, the, 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 the quality of the camera. Okay, because the cameras, of course, it's a big thing. Yeah. But, but yeah. people will buy the, the same camera or like a perfectly fine camera and they'll be like, well, we did all the things right. What, yeah. what was the difference? And, it's... and and then, yeah, you know, you got a, it's a lot of color grading. And then like, um, there's, 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 there's also lots of different sort of image modifiers that, mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't know about, like filters and everything. People just think about filters like ND filters and whatnot. Yeah. But there's there's a plethora of like different types of like filters that add different effects and feels and mm. moods to to the image that you just don't have access to and then yeah you, no matter how much grading you can do you'll never get that same sort of look yeah and like you're saying I mean you just we just also lack the the people doing the mentorship sometimes mm -hmm. you know um, one sometimes people just aren't that easy to approach or they're just so jaded themselves with the work that they've done that they're not you know giving back um and there's only so much the youtube guy can yeah because you can follow the instructions but you know if you don't really have someone oh uh, yeah like and, time, and like, it's sort of like um youtube gives these people uh, a lot of people like a false sense of like <laughs> knowing <laughs> i like i saw this i saw this video on on on, on instagram the other day mm. and uh, he was like YouTubers in 2021 and this guy is setting up all the lights and the cameras and whatnot, fancy lights and cameras and he sits down and he's like guys uh, I'm going to tell you why gear is not everything and when he just like set up a whole scene with all this expensive gear <laughs> so like true 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 yeah true, true. <laughs> uh, like I just shot this on my phone and then you're like, like yeah okay, so like a 10 person don't, production don't, crew. don't say that gear isn't yeah. everything it's very important it's very important yeah and like knowing how but how yeah. to how to use it so g given all that um what has what has helped you and how are you how have you um gone about that and like trying to just circumvent some of these things with the menship with with others if I come on set and Will's on there, can I can I ask Will to help me with something? Or <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like this. It's it's the, the the main the main thing for for film. It's networking. It's mm -hmm. who you know, and uh, yeah. So whenever you you're around someone, you you got to just talk to them, and yeah, then you know you, they, they might be able to help you out in ways you never you never realized. Yeah. So it's the networking, communication, and just trying to be eager and and and, and interested in in, in what mm. other people are doing yeah because i think there's also a bit of a people might be scared and saying oh this person will think i'm not serious because i just don't know as much as i should in approaching them in the first place but also where are we supposed to get that that knowledge from yeah in the first place a lot of people they don't shoot for the edit well no. a lot of things you shouldn't really shoot for the edit but you should have a, a plan on how you're going to edit this have the final vision yes. in mind yeah yes you should have a plan of how you're going to edit this because if you just come with like a whole mess of footage mm -hmm. that's what just gets oh that, that that's main reason why it's just yeah. you get a whole mess of footage and then people don't know how to sync audio properly and yeah now, now you're spending a week trying to sync some audio and then realize all the clips were named wrong anyway. So, yeah. You just... I always think... Of, I'll literally never forget of a film I watched where um, we're looking at an over-the-shoulder shot of somebody reacting to, like, this person over whose shoulder we're looking yeah. at speaking. And then the audio's going um, and that person's <laughs> reacting. Then the audio stopped but they use that audio for the footage of this person still oh, talking. So gosh. it's quiet and she's reacting and you just see like... She's nodding her head to absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, same yeah. thing in that film as well. Like you're saying, people not... Um, either people doing too much editing while they're filming or they're not doing any editing at all when they, they're just cutting scenes together. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of like people just... And, appearing and, in frame. Yeah, and, 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 and editing is not just cutting... It, it, it is it is it is designing the flow and the pace mm. of the story um yeah so so it, it, editing that's what builds up tension yeah it builds up tension in horror movies yeah it it's yeah so it, that that's why it's you get the fast paced editing in in action movies yeah yeah so it's not just okay here's one shot of this person here's one shot of this person it is the way of 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 molding the story mm -hmm. into 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 what it's going to be yeah yeah and and knowing when 
to link and that's when it comes the important thing like you were saying before is having a director plus you know a dop or the cinematographer on set because there's a lot of storytelling outside of just the dialogue you mm -hmm. know getting somebody yes. else's reaction yeah. in the, shot the, 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 the movement into... the movement of the camera mm -hmm. the framing that is all part of the, the, the storytelling process yeah. yeah yeah no there's definitely been it's it's definitely something you have to have an eye for but like you say picking up with experience and then yeah. watching other people's work like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier with a critical eye and seeing those and things then you and understand oh, okay i understand why why they made that choice why they put the camera there why they decided to mm -hmm. pan or tilt or, or dolly or something like that yeah it's to create m emotion it is it is not just yeah, this yes, is, this we're not, is we're not, we're just not, yes, we're just not <laughs> filming these people just standing here, yes. In the, yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah, it's, uh, or there's also a lot of, um, we just wanted this cool shot, but then it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. So you just, <laughs> and it looks cool, but then to the, there's just been a broken telephone, it's just two completely different languages between what's going on and mm -hmm. what the camera is saying. Um, and that's, so that's something when you as a cinematographer, you, actually want to see how much do you personally read the script before going into a job and i i I'd read i read the script uh -huh. as much as i hate reading scripts as much as i hate right. reading scripts it's, it's part of the job yes but I, I've, <laughs> I've got to do it um yeah just so i got an understanding of what we're, we're, we're trying to attempt here yeah right. yeah but you, you definitely especially if you're like the dop you definitely have to have a, a, yeah, a good understanding of the script uh so yeah like because if you're just shooting something you don't understand why why the scene is happening you can't really uh, shoot it to create that emotion you're trying you to can't, convey you can't use the camera as a vehicle or mm -hmm. even just the li everybody just put that lighting or put the angles in there to move the story yes. forward and it's such a huge difference when you see when you watch a production where the people and all of the crew and everything understood read the script to begin mm -hmm. with and there's all the storytelling that's happening without the dialogue at all and it cripples the actors yes yes because <laughs> they are they're just sort of like okay i'm just going to be wooden and just say my lines or they're doing this great performance and it's just it's just it's not lost. seen it's, it's just lost. not seen because yeah. somebody was like let's just do a wide <laughs> got the scene done yeah oh okay yeah that's that's comforting to know because it's <laughs> definitely productions where you can tell that, you know, some some of the people in the crew, or whatever, just like apart from the director, nobody knows what what's is going, going on. on with yeah. the the script. So nobody can do their job as a storyteller. And I don't know if if you've seen this, um, if you've experienced this on set, or is some people will not come to someone else's set with the mindset that I too am a storyteller. They only view themselves as storytellers if they're working on their, and their own thing. Projects. Yeah, it's like, oh, I would have done this differently. This is well, why aren't you doing this? I've had like people that are, mm -hmm. and then they're just approaching the job like mechanically, just from a technical perspective. But you do to try to. Yeah, well, yeah, especially I guess if it's, it's if it's if it's narrative, you 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 definitely want to make sure you, you're trying to convey emotion. But like if it's mm -hmm. sort of like commercial or something like that, yeah, there's a, there's a lot more clinical sort of. We've True. got a specific way this has to look. Yeah, 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 yeah. That uh, it shows. It's a lot of things people I think don't show. So for you in. So I guess we're just gonna ask before before we go. Um, your basic three things that you just have to remember if you're a cinematographer, and then your like things I personally have noticed that a lot of people don't think about until they've had this much experience that you have to do. Um, the basic things that what? Sorry, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so just like basic things to to look out for to be a good cinematographer. Um, I guess with with film especially you got to understand this is this is a calling it's not for everyone you got to have the passion mm. for it because it's not a glamorous job it's not an easy job um but yeah just Im make sure you got the passion for it and i guess mm. the only way you're going to have the passion for it is if you actually go out and shoot and see if you really enjoy doing it yeah, yeah. uh what else can i say 
uh, just o- always be open to to new ideas mm-hmm. and um, just have fun yeah yeah like just you said first see if you actually enjoy yes have fun and you know doing. and then it will it, it, as 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 hard and long as the days are th- as soon as soon as you finish you'll be like I can't wait for the next day I can't wait to yeah. come back and do this again yeah yeah, sure. it's just uh, I guess it's sort of like you got to be a b- bit int- introspective and mm-hmm. and just understand what you want out of it and are you is, does it does it quench your your creativity? All right, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on thank our Friday you. Film Podcast. Thank you very um, much. This has been the ALZ Film Friday Film Podcast between Magamba TV, well Magamba Network, and um, the Accountability Lab Zimbabwe.